the last speaker for this morning. Uh, I have the pleasure to introduce you, uh, Yossi Daya, which who is a um, uh, senior uh, security researcher at Akamai. And uh, Yossi will speak about uh, web boats. So it seems uh, quite promising uh, presentation. So Yossi, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, I am Yossi Daya. I'm a senior security researcher at Akamai Technologies. Uh, we sit in Israel. Uh, and I'm here today to talk with you about the phenomena of web robots. As you know, there are crawlers, spiders, scrapers going th over the web. And it's a very wide phenomena, as illustrated by this uh, dramatic title in the scene from iRobot. Uh, in the last year, we at Akamai, uh, we led the research in this uh, field of uh, ro web robots. And now I want to present you some of our research, a little bit of statistics, examples, detection methods or mitigation methods towards uh, all this uh, robot phenomena. So, first of all, I want to start with a, a question that uh, we hear now and then from our clients at the Akamai. Why is my site so popular suddenly? A client detects certain spike in his uh, traffic to uh, maybe a certain feature in his application, and he wants to know why the reason. So I'm going to show you a real life story, a true story that happened a few weeks ago even. Okay, uh, one of our clients who is a large uh, retail uh, and he have a website, he detects a uh, traffic increase. He tries to do a little bit of basis analysis to his traffic to detect what is he seeing, what's happening. He says the, the increase is not uh, related with a small set of IPs. So he tries to make a decision. He rules out DDoS because it's not very aggressive, it's not something that uh, uh, dropping his service. It's a spike, but it's not something that is uh, dropping his service. It's not a DDoS. He also says it doesn't seem like a scraper because it seems like they are real, real, using real browsers and they are uh, not, uh, each IP is, uh, doesn't seem like doing a, a scraping uh, activity. It's also not an attack. It's not a malicious traffic. It's nothing malicious out there. It's just traffic, regular traffic, but it increases. What it does see is it's a thousands of new IPs. Each IP browses for products. This website has a catalog of products, and each, each one of these IPs is browses for products. And each one of these IPs uh, creates a small number of requests. Nothing it seems uh, very, very aggressive from each IP. So the client says, it doesn't see like a DDoS. It's, I don't think it's a scraper. It's definitely not a web attack. What is it then? This is where we are going, and we are, did a little bit of a, a analysis on this traffic. We have a big data. So we try to do some behavior profiling on this activity and to see if we're detecting something and we, we can say what we are detecting. First of all, we detected that uh, in this time span, 3,000 IPs uh, coming from only 15 different subnets. Uh, IPs from the whole subnet were used and they all went to this website. Each IP only requested a little bit less than 100 requests, HTTP requests. But all IPs we detected were, belongs to the same cloud provider. So, okay, this seems a little bit suspicious. What we also know, uh, fi find out that all IPs requested the same folder but changed the file name, which in this example, it's actually the folder is the product and the file name is the product's uh, ID. Uh, we try to detect signatures of this uh, activity. We de detected that all of those IPs and with, in, with all of those requests uh, used a single user agent, which by looking at the user agent, it seems like a regular user agent of a Firefox, not very up-to-date Firefox version, but still exists. People work with this uh, Firefox version. We also detected another weird thing. All these uh, HTTP requests had a common uh, request header names. Uh, common header names. First of all, connection close, which is weird because a browser will usually use connection keep alive. Also, X forwarded for unknown, which means, okay, it comes from a proxy that hides the source IP. It's a little bit weird, but 
doesn't say anything about the whole phenomena, only about this certain request or, or this certain IP. Uh, detecting all of those stuff, all those uh, behaviors and signatures, we came to a conclusion that it is not only a scraper, okay? It's a highly distributed mega scraper. First of all, if you look at the mega scraper as a botnet, we detected that it was generating millions of HTTP requests while each IP only created less than 100, but all the botnet was millions of HTTP requests. We did some further research on the botnet and we discovered that he also scraped and attacked seven other different uh, large retail websites using the same method. So only by looking at it as a white phenomena, we can see the big picture because if we would look at it as a pair, an IP, we won't see anything because every, none of the IP will, will be, all will, be, will go under our radar, none of them will be detected as malicious or I don't know, maybe there's something weird about them but nothing that we can put our finger on. Only by looking at it as a, at the broad look and we de detect this botnet, we detect all, the, all those IPs coming from uh, specific subnets, all belong to the same network all going to the same resource, all changing, browsing for product IDs, and together with all that, all of them are using the same exact signature. So this is, that's how we can say, okay, this is a mega scraper. This is a botnet, a very big, big botnet, and this, this is the way to detect it. We converged all of this data to a one single scraper. Okay, uh, let me a little bit tell you something about our uh, big data, okay? He, we at Akamai, we, are, uh, we have a lot of clients. We see up to 30% of our websites going to our servers. So based on the, all this data we see in our servers, we built uh, our own big data platform, which we call the Cloud Security Intelligence. It says here uh, we have uh, 20 terabytes of daily attack data, but we also have a lot of feeds of uh, not only attack data, um, regular data, uh, uh, aggregated fields to detect behaviors. Okay, we have uh, two petabytes of security data stored. It's uh, up to 90 days of retention. It's indexed. We have a lot of uh, queries uh, uh, that, are, uh, that are running daily. Okay, so based on this big data and what we see uh, on this big data, we try to ask ourselves a question. How many bots are we seeing out there? So we took a one day traffic, 24 hours uh, last month, and did a little bit of analysis on it based on our, all our uh, detection methods. So what we discovered that in a one day, we see that out of 85 billion requests that we see one day going through our uh, servers, eight billion of them was bot traffic. Okay, this is almost nine and a half percent of all traffic is bot traffic. This is what we see, this is what we detect. We try to analyze this traffic, see if we can categorize all those uh, bots to say, if we can say something about them. Okay, first of all, we detected that 26% of all bots are search engines and site indexers. You have your uh, big search engines, you know them, Google, Bing, but there are also a lot of esoteric search engines, uh, specific search engines. All those search engines crawl the web, go through all the web, so they it makes a lot of noise. So that's why 26% of all tra about the traffic is of search engines. 43% is crawlers, spiders, and scrapers. Let's zoom in on that. 24% of them are content scrapers. Those are uh, uh, scrape, uh, scrapers, bots, that go to your website and scrape data. We don't know what the purpose, we just know they scrape data from your website. 7% are advertising tools. Those are tools that crawl your data and collect data from your, from your website for advertising purposes. We have data aggregators, uh, bots that go to multiple data sources, multiple websites, collect data from there and aggregate it in a one page, like RSS readers. We have web archivers, a lot of uh, bots out there that archive the web. We don't know what the purpose, but they archive the web, maybe for academic uh, purposes. A lot of website monitors that check for uh, broken links, uh, performance, uh, SEO analyzers that go to your website and for uh, optimization uh, purposes. 
Even social media crawlers, a lot of them we see goes to, go to uh, social media websites, crawl for data from there. I don't know, it's used for people finder or maybe for uh, uh, trend analysis or uh, semantic analysis and things like that. Okay, those are the crawlers and spiders. We also have 6% six, six of all, of all uh, bot traffic is app API engines, which are API clients, go to public APIs, RESTful services, web services, a lot of those. 1% are secu security scanners, security scanners that go to, uh, to, to, to scan uh, for vulnerabilities in applications, 1% of all traffic, of all bot traffic. 24% is other bots. We detect that those are bots, this is, traffic, this is bot traffic, but we can't really say what they are doing, what their purpose is, what's uh, standing behind them. So we categorize them as other bots. Uh, our main goal is to lower this number down, maybe add some more categories or expand existing categories. But, but this is the picture as we see right now. So, what are our common bot challenges? What, what, why, bot is, why a bot is bad, a crawler, why is it bad? First of all, stolen intellectual property, a scraper or a bot or a crawler comes to your website, steals data from there, we don't know what he does with it, okay? It's intellectu your intellectual property. Increased price competition. We see a lot of competitors crawl each other's sites and scrape prices for the purpose of, of uh, competition, to, to see, to check what is the price of their competitors so they can lower down the price or do some kind of balancing. Additional bandwidth costs, okay, it uh, goes without saying, uh, a, a lot of bandwidth, if you have a CDN company, you are, a, you are a client of a CDN company, you will pay a lot more for all those uh, additional bandwidth. So after giving you some statistics and uh, example, I want to review our, uh, Bot detection approaches. We have uh, several approaches for detecting bots. As you can see, my character is played by Will Smith, which is uh, cool. Um, we have certain approaches. First of all, the transactional based. We can detect a bot based on single HTTP request. He has a signature, a signature in his request. Maybe it's in a user agent or is in the request header. We have the behavioral approach, like we saw the first example. We, we go on a, tra on a traffic of a website and we try to detect if we are seeing a bot that, uh, uh, an activity that is profiled as bot, a bot activity. Try to differentiate between the human browsers, the human users, and the bot users. So it's a big data analytics and it's over observation over time. You have rate controls, okay? If someone exceeds the rate controls, then he's probably a bot. He can be even a DDoS attack, but he's, he's a bot, he's not human. Human versus bot, versus bot challenges. We can uh, place a, a challenge for the bot. The simplest challenge is to see if he, if he obtains JavaScripts. A browser will obtain JavaScript, but a normal uh, HTTP library won't obtain JavaScript. You can give, the, give him CAPTCHAs. You can even give him some uh, honeypots there, see if he goes to the honeypots. Uh, those are the human versus bot challenges that, are, that are exist. I want to expand now on our uh, first two detection methods and a little, little bit expand about them. Signatures, uh, based on one transaction, how can we detect a bot? Actually, the approach to a signature-based detection, we kind of ask the questions, some questions for the bot. Uh, we kind of a Turing test to detect if it's a bot or a human. First of all, we ask, who are you? There are a lot of declared bots out there, bots that they say, okay, I am this and this bot, this is my name, here is what I do, here is my homepage, and this is my con contact info. Uh, mostly they declare themselves, identify themselves on the user agent string, but also sometimes in the HTTP request header. So they have, you have a header name from or a header name X crawler. I have a lot of header names that used by bots. This is an example of a user agent structure of a declared bot. He specifies his name, his version, and his URL. He can add their description and all the things I mentioned before, uh, earlier. This is who are you? Second question we can ask is 
what platform are you using? Okay, a lot of bots use certain platforms uh, uh, to to do the bot activity, not not with the browsers. So we have the, the, those are the detected bots. We detect them based on user agent signature or even HTTP request header uh, signatures, uh, like header, header ordering, number of headers they are using. You have development platforms that uh, this is a platform used by bots, like Java, Python, Ruby, what have you. You have HTTP libraries. All of those, plat all of those platforms uh, have a built-in HTTP library, libraries that uh, manage requ uh, HTTP requests and responses. You also have a lot of scraping platforms, libraries and services. You have libraries built in Python and Ruby that actually manage scraping activity. Uh, they manage requests and responses. They parse your HTML. You can manage their, your uh, crawling or scraping uh, workflow. You also have services, scraping as a service. There's a service that you can go to the service. You can determine what kind of, uh, what website do you want to uh, scrape. You can determine uh, the fields and he will build a script for you that will automatically run from his, uh, automatically run from his server and uh, do this uh, activity. Also those can be detected by user, by user agent or by HTTP header. You have a lot of headless browser automation tools that can also be used for bot activity, like PhantomJS, Selenium, uh, WebInject. There are a lot of those uh, that it imitate uh, human activity, and uh, you can automate it. So those are also can be detected by uh, by signature. Uh, a good way, a good, another good signature is to see where is this bot coming from, okay? We detected that bots prefer to use certain type of networks or gateways to the internet with their activity. So to know the source is a good indication. Proxy servers, a lot of bots go through proxy, all, do all the activity through proxy servers. VPS, similar to proxy, they, they open a tunnel, a VPN tunnel, and go through this to the web and do their scraping activity. Tor, of course, this is used for malicious activity, also bots. Cloud infrastructure, this is very common. There's a, there are a lot of, cl uh, of cloud uh, companies that offer you virtual machines. You can host whatever you want there and uh, use it. A lot of bots, it's very cheap, a lot of bots just purchase some this kind of virtual machines, host their bots in these virtual machines, and go to the internet with this uh, using those uh, machines. It's very very common. Okay, let's say a bot tries to mask his identity to you. Don't he, he doesn't want you to know who he is, so we try to imitate a regular browser user agent. Some succeed, but we see that some do some quirks, some mistakes, and I will show you here some common mistakes that we see. First of all, you see this user agent, okay? When the developer uh, assigned the user agent in the, in the, in the variable, he, puts, he, he writes down user agent. So we see a lot of user agent that starts with the text user agent. This can be a browser, it's not a regular Chrome, it's possibly something, something is, is bot. We don't know yet what he's doing, but we can see it's a bot. It's a very, very weird uh, signature. Another type of signatures, we can see that, uh, let's say, a uh, bot, when he enters the user agent, he surrounds the user agent with quotes or double quotes. No browser does that, okay? So it's a mistake, and we can detect those kind of mistakes. It's a very common mistake, by the way. Very common mistake, by the way. Look at this user agent, okay? It seems normal, everything looks good, but look at the Chrome version, okay? It's not an existing version. It's a mistake that's also done, uh, been done by bots, okay? It's not an existing uh, version, maybe somebody played with the build of Chrome, but it's, there's no official Chrome with this version, so we can detect that this is a, ve a very unique uh, version, it's not something that exists in our traffic, so it's also an indication for bot. You have also HTTP request header quirks, not only with user agent. Small number of headers. If we see some uh, requests only using host connection and user agent, okay, it's weird. It's not. Uh, it's not a browser. Check out this one, okay? It's mistyped, misspelled. 
It's, it's, the, those kind of typos are very, very common. We, he replaced the letters C and P. Uh, e and P, uh, sorry. So actually we have a great rule to detect uh, typos in common header names. It's also a quirk. Duplicate header names. When a developer builds the browser, he puts there a duplicate header name. This is also weird and it also can be used by bots. If he's using HTTP 1.0 or lower, okay, no browser now we use this protocol. Only bots that use some development framework that is still using uh, this protocol. Connection close, as we saw in the first example. Okay, most browsers will go with connection keep alive. Why would the browser open connection just for this certain request. So this is another way those quirks. Okay, we said, we, we asked the bot, who are you? What if the bots say, okay, I am this and this, but he's not really, he's not really who he's saying he is, okay? We, saw, we see a lot of search engine impersonators, a bot that comes with the user agent of a known search engine like Google or Bing, but he's, and it depends on the website that whitelists this user agent, but it, it's, not, it's not really him. So we have a way, we can detect where is he coming from. If he's not coming from Google servers or Google IPs or Bing IPs, then he's probably impersonated. And we have a lot of those. Actually, this is a topic for a different presentation, but we see a lot of those uh, impersonators. Okay, that was the section about uh, signature, signature HTTP transactional based detection. I want to show you some, how, what our approach for behavior profiling, how do we profile a bot? First of all, we need to look on, on the overall activity of this website, okay? We do an analysis for six to 12 hours traffic because there are a lot of bots out there that work in a very, very low rate in a very, very wide time span, so they won't get detected. So we need to make a, a little bit bigger time span, six to 12 hours to detect all those uh, bad bots. First of all, we can detect an IP. How long has it been active on a site, okay? If we see an IP that has been active on a site like seven hours, uh, in a row, so okay, this is something weird. We don't, we're not saying it's a bot yet, but we detect this is something weird. How many different resources he requested? He, if he requested the same page, but changed the query, only the query. If he requested the same host, but he diff, uh, used different, uh, different paths, he, multiple paths. We can see if we can detect regular patterns over time. Maybe we can see the bot that he have a fixed time interval between each request, or maybe he have a certain workflow that he works with that is different from a regular uh, uh, browser user. So it's also a way to detect if he's a bot. For the targeted resources, if he's using the same page, multiple queries, Let's see if he's looping through a parameter. Maybe he's, use, he's only changing one, uh, value, one parameter value. In this uh, example, he changes the product's ID. He enumerates, he in, enumerates through the product ID and he changes the value over there. If he's using the same host and multiple paths, maybe he's looping through path file names like this. The, the folder is product and he's changing the file name, which is in this case, product ID, like the example I showed you at the, first, at, the, at the beginning of the presentation. This is a very good way to detect, so because a lot of bots go to certain resource and certain catalog and scrape data from there. Website response code ratio. When a normal user browses a website, he uses his browser. Okay, so he clicks uh, links he sees on the browser, uh, ser uh, search results. So you would expect that he will normally see the response that he's getting from the website. It will be okay, okay responses, 200 responses, maybe redirection. But you would don't expect him to see a lot of not found or uh, unauthorized. A bot, on the other hand, can, ha can come with a pre-prepared uh, URL list, or maybe he's enumerating through uh, values, uh, query values like we saw or uh, even he's crawling the website and he's also going to hidden link, links in the HTML. So we expect that we see the ratio between the good responses 
to the okay responses to the bad responses will be bigger with bots as they're for uh, uh, regular uh, human users. This is a very good way to detect them. Another good uh, uh, heuristic. Workflow, okay? Does the IP follow a legitimate user workflow? When you go, when, I, uh, when a user goes to a, to a search, to a website, and he wants to search for, uh, for, his, for the catalog. So first of all, he goes to the home page, and then he goes to the search page. If you want to go to the shopping cart, first of all, he needs to go to the add product page. Also, a lot of uh, websites, when you search your, the catalog, you will, they implement autocomplete. So when you search the catalog and you start clicking the search terms, you will get autocomplete. So a normal user, when he, well, if he wants to uh, activate search, he will go through a lot of autocomplete pages. While a, while a bot, will not do all that. He will go directly to the search page. We won't see any home page. We won't see any autocomplete requests. Also, we'll go directly to the shopping cart. You won't see him go through add product. So this is another way to detect, to detect a, uh, a workflow, a suspicious workflow. What about botnets? OK, now, uh, till now, I only, I only speak on a resolution of a single IP. What if this bot is using multiple IPs, is uh, doing a distributed uh, scraping acti bot activity, like the example I showed you in the first. So you can what we can do for to, to detect those kind of distributed uh, bot attacks, we can see if he's uh, using one or more network by subnet or AS numbers. If we see a lot of IPs, but they're coming from the same subnets, this is suspicious. We can also see if he's, using, if he's using the same set of user agents, okay? For all this activity, he used the same user agent or the same two user agents. Common uh, HTTP request header signature, okay? If he's using the same uh, weird common uh, HTTP request headers, like we see the example, this is another uh, indication. If he's requesting the same resource, all those IPs request the same resource. So this is a way for us to detect botnets. Actually, this is the most common uh, activity methods of the, all those bots. They use the sub distributed uh, activity. They go through cloud providers, proxy, and they change the IP while, while active on the websites. So this is very, very uh, meaningful, very, very significant for us to detect those. OK, that was the detection. Now what I want to, to, to do is talk with you about uh, mitigation and management. Okay, so we detected he's a bot, we know he's a bot. What should we do now? Do you think we should stop bots? We don't want to see bots in the webs at all. Uh, okay. Let's first of all say some, some stuff about bots. First of all, it's not a security problem per se, okay? All those crawlers, scrapers, it's more of a lost revenue, it's a business problem. When you crawl to a site and you buy all these products and resell it, or when you go to a site and you try to detect its prices so you can lower down your prices, it's not security, it's, it's business. So it's not malicious. Not all of bots are necessarily bad, okay? You have some good bots. Let's say you have a search engine. You don't want to block a search engine. You don't want to stop a search engine because if you stop a search engine, it's bad for you. You want to be ranked high in every search engine. You don't want to stop, to stop them. What about, what about price comparisons, okay? You have a lot of price comparisons that go to, uh, from the same business segment, go to different websites and they compare prices. So and if you have the lower price, you will see it in, in his web, in this price comparison website. So you don't want to miss this bot. You want him to go to your website and collect this data because it's good for your business. So you don't want him to, to stop him. Another thing, if you stop bot, he will always come back. Okay, you stop him, he will come back. But it will be much more sophisticated, so it's be much more harder to detect him. Okay, harder to detect, you need to find some more signatures, more different behavioral, maybe more challenges. So he will always come back and come back bigger and stronger. So 
you're not, you don't necessarily want to stop bots. What you want to do with bots is our approach is management. You want to manage the bots, okay? So let's say a website administrator, he knows what bots comes to his website and he can, uh, he can, uh, he can tell what he wants to do with each bot. He can say, okay, this bot, I will give him full access because he's a good bot, he's a search engine, I want him to, to crawl my site, okay? If it is a little bit aggressive bot, he can slow him down. He can slow him down by serving him slow or even giving him captures. The slow down uh, method is a very good method because you need to slow him down to, to reach a certain balance when, when it, is, it, is, uh, it is not hurting your business, it's not harmful for you. You slow him down this rate, but still, the, scra the scraper will continue to use your to scrape or crawl your website at the same method, and it will not change itself. And you still in his, in, and and everybody's happy with it, the bot and the website uh, administrator. You can, if it's a very big bot, you can serve stale objects. You can give him uh, a, not a fake objects to uh, fake HTML pages. It is a very good way. You can also uh, limit his time activity. You can say, okay, I want him to be active only by night, not by day. So this is our main approach. We want to do some interaction between the bots and the websites so they can manage them. So, so you don't want to stop them. This is not our method. Okay, what I did uh, till now uh, is showing you the, all, the detection, all the detection methods and mitigation. So let's summarize what we saw. First of all, as we saw, a large portion of the websites is, is traffic generated by automated bots, okay? We saw the statistics, about 10% of all activity that we see is, is, is from web bots. Why, okay, we saw that we can detect bots by the signature, okay? It is a good way, this is like we say, the low hanging fruit to detect bots. But if you want to detect a real big bot, you want to, to detect the whole phenomena, you have to have some sort of a behavior profiling. You have, and you have, to detect, you, you have to detect the distributed bots. So without that, you don't have nothing. Signatures is good, but it's not good enough. You need to add the added value of behavior profiling and uh, botnet detection. As we say, it's not a security problem per se. Okay, but this is a, a business loss revenue. Also, we are saying that attempting to stop bots will only make things worse, okay? We don't want to stop them, as we said before. We want to manage bots, Not miti no mitigation. Don't, we don't want to deny them at all. Maybe if they are malicious, very malicious, but not the malicious ones, we don't want to stop them uh, or, uh, at all. Okay, so basically this is my presentation. I say I still have some time. But uh, the problem with bots is, okay, it's a new field now. It's not security. And you, you don't really know what is, while in uh, malicious, in, in a web attack, you know what is happening. You know what he's doing. Here you're only seeing requests for pages. Nothing too suspicious. So it's always a problem what to do there with bots. Uh, so this is our main challenge, how we, to detect them, not to, to detect too many false positives, to lower down the false positive rates. And uh, our, our detection methods that we presented here are very, very good and very, very helpful to us. And it is, we don't have any product yet, it's still in research. But uh, this is our research and okay. I hope uh, that you enjoyed hearing me. My, my English is not so well, but I, I hope I uh, explain myself uh, sufficiently. Okay, so. That's it probably. Uh, if you have any question, you have a lot of time for questions now. Yes. Uh, 
No, it's not my approach. It's a decision of the website. Maybe during daytime he has a lot of traffic and you don't want any, anything to, to be uh, overloading in his bandwidth. So maybe he would like to do is, okay, tell this bot, you want to scrape my site? At night, I don't have a lot of traffic at night. Come at night, not by daytime. This is a decision of the, of the website administrator. It's not my decision. It's a business decision. Yes. We don't have any mechanism yet. It's still in research. This is what still I'm thinking. But you can, you can, maybe you can do some agreement with them not to be not to be active by day, only active by night. Maybe you can serve them some some maybe to slow them down very very slow slow them down. At the very, to, so they can it will be active at a very slow rate, so, so only by night you can give them full access. You have a lot of methods, but this is uh, our main approach. Further questions? Yes. So uh, there's no legal, uh, you mean a legal action, me as a CDN, okay. as a website administrator? Yeah, you said like a cease and desist order, I mean, is there some investigation to try and find out who is calling the site? We do some investigation to find out who is calling the site. Uh, most, of, most of the time, even the website administrator can help us. He can say who is interested in his, in his data. There are no, till now, there is still, there is no, still no product, no, nothing. It's just research. So. We haven't thought about any legal uh, activity, act, actions that we can do for, uh, for those uh, bots. Another question? Okay, so thank you very much.